Hi friends, in this tutorial you will see how to create a keylogger in Python. So let's get started. Now for this uh, tutorial what we will use is a module or a package called PinePod. So if you search for Python PinePod documentation, you'll see lots of links, but if you click on this pypy.org site, uh, you will get this page in here. And in here, um, down below, if you see, it says that see here for the full documentation. If you click on this link, you will be given this page in here. So by default, if you open this, you can see that uh, on the left side of the page, there's this table of contents. What we are interested in is the monitoring the keyboard. So if you click on this, we will come down and we will see this code in here. So what this code does is that uh, it reads the characters from your keyboard as you type it and it will print it on a screen. However, by default, it doesn't save it to a file. So I will be adding that functionality to it after I explain this. So first, I just want to explain how this module works and what it does. So let's get started. Now then here, what we do is that uh, we copy this link and in here I have this running in here. So the first line, what it does is that it says from the PinePod import keyboard. What it means is that I'm saying from the PinePod library import this keyboard function. On this line, what I do is that I create a function. It is called on press. And for a parameter, it will take this key. And in here, this is my try and accept block. So in here, I'm trying this. And it's if it fails, if I get this attribute error, error I will print this line. Now in here, um, what I'm doing is that I'm saying print alphanumeric key zero pressed. So what it does is that it will print alphanumeric key and then pressed. For this zero, what it does is that it runs this code in here, which says key.car. So basically what it does is that it shows you the character that has been pressed. This says accept attribute error. So it says if you get this attribute error, it will print this line. Special key, zero pressed format key. So it will print this special key and then the key. And after that, it will print this pressed. So it's just good functionality. It's just good if you're uh, trying to find out if there are any problems or that so that you understand the exceptions that are being thrown and um, it can be helpful. On this one, what I, it does is that it creates another function. It says diff on release and as a parameter, it takes this uh, key variable or key. So in here, I'm saying that print zero released and then again for the format, I'm typing in this key. So what it does is that it will press so whatever key that we press on the keyboard, this function will run. And whatever key that we release, this will run. So basically, the thing is that whichever key you press, you would have to release it. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. All you would do is that if you keep pressing it, only that character will get printed on the screen. So if whenever you press a key, you also release it. It happens. Uh, so after this, it says that of the key, so whatever key is that is pressed in here, you can see that this is the variable that you are putting it or the parameter. You are saying if it is input to keyboard.key.escape. So it says that if the key that you are pressing is, is escape key, return false. What it means is that stop it. In here, you can see the comment also says stop listener. So basically what it all does is that it says listen to all the keys. If the key is pressed, type it. If the key is released, type it on the screen. Sorry, print it on the screen. And if the keyboard, if it's escape, then what you do is that you return false or you stop it. In here, I'm saying with keyboard.listener. So notice the keyboard function or submodule that I imported from here. I am using this listener function of it. And this function, it takes two parameters. One is on press and the other is on release. And the first one I'm saying on press is equal to this function called on press that I created in here. And the second parameter, which is on release, I'm passing this on release function, which I created in here. And then I'm passing it as listener and at the end, I'm joining them and saying listener.join. So let's run this for now and let's save it and run it and see how it works. So, sorry, not Python shell, um, this one, run module. So now you can see that this program or this code is running. So let's say I type in something like, hello, how are you? So notice this, the first H that I type in here it says alpha numeric key h pressed so this line this is this one it says alpha numeric key zero pressed so instead of this zero we are seeing this 
T car, which is the character that we pressed. So in this case, it is H. That is why you see the H in here. And then this function runs on release. So when we press H, we also release it. So when we release this, we see this in here, it says alphanumeric, sorry, this one, H released. Then we type in E. So this says alphanumeric T E is pressed, and then E is released. At the end, you see all those things that so far I have typed in. So it's hello, how are you? The H is in here, however, but the hello, how are you is in here. Now what we do in here is that there is this uh, this F statement, which says that if the key that you press is escape. So this in here, I'm referring to this one. What you do is you return false and stop it. So now let me press escape in here. Now you can see that when I press the escape, it will stop. So it says key escape released. That is because in here I typed the escape key. So at the first it says it's pressed, then it says it is released. That is because I pressed it and I released it. That's why it has stopped. So this is not kind of useful, but if you're trying to run it on a program, it is dynamic. If you close this, everything will be gone. So how do we add this functionality so that what happens is that it, uh, it saves all those things in, the, in a file, all the keyboard characters that we type. So in here, what we will do is that we will modify this function. So instead of printing it on the screen, what we will do is that we are saying open a file and run it on a file. So how do we do that? Let's create a file, this variable file. What it does is that it says, uh, sorry, not this in here. It says open and we pass it a location like cc, uh, sorry, c users admin and desktop. And let's name it log.txt. And then in here, it, let's type in A. And after uh, I'm done doing that, I'm saying file.write. And write what? Write key. But we have to pass it as an, a string, otherwise, you would get an error. So after that, we are saying when you are done, close it. So let me explain this quickly. What it does is that file, you're creating this variable, it says open. Open what open this file in here see users admin desktop so let me open my desktop this is my desktop currently you can see that there is no file called log.txt so what i'm saying is that open this file so if it doesn't exist what it will do is that it will create it what this a means it means append so what it means is that if you're creating a file a is for append so append what it does is that whatever you type it will add it to the end of it there is another option w so what the problem with this one is that if i every time i type a key what it will do is that it will overwrite it however we don't want to overwrite that file we want to add to the end of it whatever we type that's why we use a i have created a, a couple of tutorials or three tutorials uh, on how to read write and append data to a file so if you don't understand it in here watch my channel for that uh, tutorial i have explained in depth how to do it on this line what i'm saying is that use this file variable with which we have opened this file and i'm saying write it so this is using the write function and it is saying type in this key so this key is in here it is whatever key we press and then i'm using this str function what it does is that whatever we type it converts it into a string otherwise it wouldn't work so this is compulsory you have to type in str and at the end i'm what i'm saying is that file.close so I'm saying once you're done just close the file we don't need this on release I think it's kind of extra so I will delete this part from here and also this part um, the release since we have removed that we don't need this so let me do some cleaning so this if I save it now now you can see that it's the same as before, except now it takes one parameter, which is this function in here. And we have saved it. Uh, let's run it. Run module. Now you can see that there is no nothing in here. So if I open this notepad, and if I start typing like this is, now notice this file appeared in here before it wasn't there. This is MA Academy. Now, if I open this log file, let me minimize this, open, you can see that it types this. This is 
and then the space character and then is uh, then again a key space and all this but all those things that I entered and at the end this enter key however if you you can see that all these keys they are side by side however if you want to add the space into it all you have to do is let's say let's close this let's open it again in here let me close this one okay uh, in here if I do something like um, if I put in a space and if I save it what it will do is that let me run the module let me open this text file again and this do it again this is what is it saying sorry yeah that now you can see that in here if I open log you should be able at the end you should see this so now when you type these things you get a space in between them so let me delete the contents of this file let's save it the process is open okay that's fine if I close this close this don't save and I close this again yes and I what I do is that if I delete it now let's run this again run module in here if i type this is ma academy notice the file appeared in here again this time you can see that there is a space between these characters so it's more readable this is more functionality that you can add to it so this is how you can make a keylogger if uh, you want to make um, if you want to turn it into an executable uh, there's an easy way of doing it uh, if you don't know how to do it just um, Leave it in the comments below i will create a tutorial for that as well so this is it for this tutorial guys and one thing that i have to say is that uh, this is just this video is just for educational purposes don't use it for malicious purposes don't use it in environments where you are not allowed because if you do it you will get in serious trouble for it you might even go to prison for these things so this video is just for educational purposes do not run this in environments in which you are not allowed um, and um, if you have any comments or any suggestions feel free to put it in the comment section below and if you found this tutorial useful make sure to share it with your friends uh, and i will see you guys in the next one